I've played Genshin Impact for over 200 hours and I've made well over 100 YouTube videos of me playing the game. To the uninitiated that may sound like a lot but to the veteran Genshin player those are rookie numbers. I'm gonna pump those numbers up, those are rookie numbers in this racket. But a while ago one of my subscribers asked me what my thoughts were about Genshin now compared to my thoughts when I first started. I'm not sure how interested anyone will be but here's my answer. I get bonus points if I act like I care. I'm going to give you some context on why I started playing Genshin, what my expectations were before I knew anything about the game, and what my first impressions were. We'll also discuss my experiences of my journey through to that, and what my thoughts are now after a significant time in the game. I'll finish up by talking about my future plans for the game. My name is Greg, this is Greg's Games, thank you for joining me, let's begin. So what made me start playing this game back in February this year? A little context on my channel is needed. I started this YouTube channel last year as an excuse to play some games I wouldn't normally play. More specifically, I wanted to make my way through my back catalogue of games that had been piling up in my Steam and Epic libraries. Making Let's Play videos seemed a fun way of doing that. But how to choose what games to play? I created a spreadsheet of all my games and then used a random number generator to select which game to play. I don't remember now why I had Genshin in my library, but its number was selected one day and it became the next game I was going to play on the channel. It's as simple as that really, fate decided, a totally random occurrence. I knew very little about Genshin before I started to play it. The only thing I knew about it was from a video I'd watched from Josh Drive Hayes when he played the game and reviewed it. I had some preconceived ideas about the game. I understood it was considered to be a pretty decent game, but I had somewhat dismissed it as a gacha game with anime waifus. I planned on giving the game a try for a couple of weeks, complete a few quests, and then move on to the next randomly selected game. I didn't plan on falling in love with the game. But I'm getting ahead of myself, let's examine my preconceived notions. I thought I knew what a gacha game was, after all I'm an experienced Raid Shadow Legends player, don't hold that against me though. I've played Raid for about 3 years and I'm firmly in the endgame, but Genshin and Raid are worlds apart. As much as I enjoy playing Raid, there's no getting around the fact that its monetization policies are predatory, and if you want to compete in the endgame you have no choice but to open your wallet. My experience with Genshin so far is completely different. I wouldn't call it a gacha game, but more of an RPG game with gacha elements. Uh, let me pause, I'm assuming you as the viewer know what a gacha game is, but just in case, here's the Wikipedia definition. A gacha game is a video game that implements the gacha toy vending machine mechanic. Similar to loot boxes, gacha games entice players to spend in-game currency to receive random in-game items. Some in-game currency generally can be gained through gameplay, and some by purchasing it from the game publisher using real-world funds. Most gacha games are free-to-play mobile games. The gacha game model began to be widely used in the early 2010s, particularly in Japan. Gacha mechanics have become an integral part of the Japanese mobile game culture. The game mechanism is also increasingly used in Chinese and Korean games, as well as Western games. Gacha games have been criticised for being addictive and are often compared to gambling due to the incentive to spend real world money on chance based rewards. While this is true with Genshin and plenty of people have spent hundreds if not thousands of dollars, pounds, whatever your currency is, to my experience at least it doesn't seem nearly as predatory as other games. With Raid for example, certain areas of the game almost require certain champions to be able to complete them, and spending vast amounts of money is the only way to get some of these characters. Try beating the Iron Twins without a Geomancer. Sure, it can be done, but it's not going to be easy. Genshin, by contrast, feels like the game can be played with any team of characters. Of course some characters or teams will make the content much easier, but not to the same extent as something like Raid. Perhaps long time players of Genshin will disagree with me, let's be honest, I am nowhere near the end game with Genshin, so perhaps my experiences will change as I reach that point, but so far, I don't feel spending is necessary in Genshin at all. I, I mean, I, I may have bought the battle pass and a couple of Welkin moons, but I didn't need to, okay? So what about the waifus? You need to keep your wrist firm so your hand doesn't slip. I mean, sure, they're there, but it's not as blatant as I was expecting. 
compare this to something like Lost in Paradise, where paradise is wherever there's good chiropractor, because these waifus all have back problems. The comparison's not even close. I think the waifu thing's a little bit unfair in Genshin, just because it's an anime game with some female characters. At least it's my waifu, though. Hmm. Naughty boys who don't do what they're told need a little punishment to keep them in line. My initial impressions of Genshin were very positive. The game is beautiful to look at, the voice acting is top quality, the opening cutscene was fantastic, as are so many of the cutscenes. The character of Paimon could so easily have been annoying, but for the most part she is adorable and comical. All the characters I've met so far have been likeable. The story quests have been fun, well acted, engaging. For the most part the English lines have been well translated, but inevitably sometimes the meaning can get a bit lost in translation and I don't always follow what they're saying, but this is fairly infrequent and really doesn't impact on the game much at all. My biggest complaint is with some of the unvoiced lines. The subtitles in some quests pop up during the action and it's easy to miss them. Some of the subtitles don't stay on screen nearly long enough for you to read them and you may end up missing what they say. I've encountered this several times and it's always frustrating. During my playtime of Genshin, I've never been bored. There's always something to do, some shiny, twinkling thing to investigate. The game is jam-packed with mini-games, story quests, side quests, bosses, exploration. The list goes on and on. In the early days, I'd set out with a plan of what I wanted to do, maybe do a side quest or challenge a boss, but on the way I'd constantly be taken off course by a chest or a hidden area or a challenge or a random event. Genshin continually throws new game modes at you. There's a collectible card game, a teapot dimension where you build furniture and buildings and landscape garden features, special events that could be anything from a puzzle board game to a rhythm game to a time trial. This can be a little overwhelming at the beginning, but Genshin does a good job at drip feeding these to you, so you never have too many things thrown at you all at once. Also, you're not compelled to take part in any of these extra game modes. I've barely touched the card game aspect, for example. I've been emotionally invested in some of these characters' stories. I've sat back and marvelled at the stunning and dramatic cutscenes. I've had a genuine smile on my face as Ayaka gets her socks wet, and a tear in my eye as Finch is reunited with an old friend. Frostrife Hayes says he's continually told by his viewers that certain games only get good after 100 hours. And while he certainly takes issue with this, after all, if a game only gets good after 100 hours, why would you spend 100 hours in a not good game just to get to the good bit? How does Genshin fare, before and after 100 hours, and over the 200 hour mark I now find myself in? I love Genshin Impact. I fell in love with it very quickly and have continued to enjoy it below, during and over 100 hours, and I'm still loving it over 200 hours in. I had no intention of becoming a Genshin Impact YouTuber, I always wanted to be a variety gamer and that is still the goal, but I have no plans on stopping playing Genshin anytime soon. I will continue to play Genshin Impact for as long as I'm enjoying it, and I'm still enjoying it. But that's what I have to say. What about you? Are you a new player just entering into the world of Devat, or are you a seasoned player who laughs at my paltry 200 hours? What are your experiences with the Genshin? Do you agree with me? Or has your experience has been different? Please let me know in the comment section. I love to read all your comments. Well, thank you so much for listening to me rambling on about this wonderful game. I'm sure there's so much more that can be said, but for now, I'm off to do my daily commissions and maybe drop by the library for no particular reason. Hey cutie, whip me up a love poem. And I hope to see you in the next video.